Alright, hello. Um, hoping everyone can see the frog. You. Yeah, bring it a little bit closer. There we go. Alright, today we're doing this frog. Um, what I want to uh, start with here is um, acknowledging that there's a switch up kind of happening between this piece as opposed to um, maybe like the butterfly piece where we're actually going to stick with a darker background since the subject is a lot brighter. And, um, you know, this is something that can be done if you have walls that shouldn't have something with a brighter background, something with, you know, something a little bit more, a little darker, a little more dulled, dulled down, uh, muted, I, I should say, where um, it'll fit better in the room that it's going. And so this was something I saw that I thought would be a good example of that. Um, so, you know, if you wanted to paint anything that's brighter, it could be a banana, it could be a bird that's real bright, um, this is going to be a good strategy for toning down the background and helping your subject stick out, but also maintaining a nice balance so that it'll hang on your wall and fit the room. So... Beginning with this, um, I didn't put any brown on my my palette, just so I can show how to create brown. I know I've mentioned it a few times before, and I might have shown it, but I really want to be more in-depth about showing it today, how you make brown if you don't have brown. Uh, all I have on here, I did add green, but if you don't have green, all you need is blue, yellow, red, black, and white, and we're going to create um, the different colors we need. I might not even touch this green. Um, I, I don't think I meant to put it down here, but I lost track of what I was doing. <laughs> but um, we're going to start with the background here. It's a lot of black and white and brown. And the way that we create brown is we're going to take... We're going to start out with red and green. There's a lot of different ways that you can honestly make it. You could add uh, black and red with certain certain amounts to make a brown you can add red and green to make a brown it depends on the kind of brown that you're trying to make this is a nice kind of in-between darkish brown but you can take it darker with blue if you wanted you can take it darker with black if you wanted um, that's a nice go-to if you wanted to add a little bit of a a brightness to the brown. You can add a little bit of yellow, make it a little bit of a bright, um, brighter brown. I apologize that this is kind of weird because it's a used plate, um, but definitely try it out. Mix up some some of these colors and see what kind of brown you like. But we're definitely going to use brown, black, and white for this background. I'm going to go with a smaller brush. This is the 8 the 8 inch flat brush. And I really want white and black and brown on on this brush just mixed up with each color here I'm just gonna go side to side and this kind of background I really want it to be pretty splotchy so I'm gonna add paint to the brush as I go and just keep it real real splotchy almost like there's um, strokes that are weaving together but they're different color instead of it being just completely flat. 
and keep it real textury. And this is gonna lighten up a bit, so you can go pretty dark back here if you like. And I do these kind of pieces starting from scratch. Um, kind of drawing out this frog later on is pretty simple. And there's a couple ways that you can do it. Um, you know, you can do it with a paintbrush from scratch, or you can draw it out with with a pen or a pencil or a marker, and then cover it over. We're gonna have different shades and just about every splotch happening so make sure you're adding different things to the brush kind of throwing these colors in here I forgot to mention earlier if you don't have green just yellow and blue will make the green I realized I just subconsciously started using my green <laughs> like I said I wasn't going to But the more yellow, um, the brighter your, your green is going to come out. The more blue, the more teal it's going to become. So find that balance that you like in your green. And then mix from there to make your brown. And this background also has a lot of kind of gray in it so you know just mixing white and black as well together to make some gray different uh, variations of it lighter darker whatever you you think but we're just going to try to keep this background darker than anything else that's going to be on it If yours does end up lighter, I'm going to demonstrate on the example over here how we throw in a shadow to kind of really put more focus on the subject. It's actually really simple and it won't, won't take much time. It'll be while this is drying. whole way through I'm just splashing this on here I'm not really um, going back over it with any other strokes and just using what's there letting what happened happen happen some more of this gray in here do your edges like this as well if you'd like or you can choose a color and uh, finish them off that way whatever sticks out to you one thing I wouldn't really have too much in the background of is green um, the leaf and the frog are gonna take up a lot of that so I don't need a whole lot of it in the background if you do any.
So we got a background. Just gonna let that dry for a little bit. And in the meantime, show how to shade uh, behind this frog over here. So let's switch these up. Okay, so I'm gonna choose a side. Um, and it'll probably be the side over here. I'm gonna take a small brush. Add a little bit of black to it. It's good to do this when the canvas is dry as well. But I'm gonna start adding darker shades back here. Then I'm going to come back to this side, same thing. Just following along these areas here. Maybe a little bit under here. From there, I'm just gonna spread some of that out. So, if you add any to the brush, just a little bit, and then bring it closer in. And scrub brush that outward. It doesn't need to be super apparent. As long as it's just a little bit of a shadow there, that's cool. This is in the case that your background um, comes out a little bit lighter when it dries and you want your frog to stick out just a little bit more. That's all it really entails there. Um, if you wanted to go darker on the edges, you could. But that's as far as I'm gonna go with mine there. Let me bring that a little closer. So now you can see he's really sticking out even more so than he was before. Some simple shading. Let's take a trip back over here. This is still drying. Um, I'll make sure I hit my bottom of the canvas there. We're going to start looking at um, the differences of these greens that are going to go down on the canvas. Um, I did separate them in my mind and when I was mixing them on how I wanted them to be. So I stuck more with the green and the white and the blue for the leaf and more of the yellow and the green and the blue for the frog. So the white lightens and the yellow brightens. And knowing that, I knew the frog was gonna be bright and anything on the leaf was just gonna be lighter. It wasn't gonna be sticking out. Um, it was just gonna be a little bit, a little bit lighter. But the frog definitely, you know, tree frogs, they're very bright and vibrant and um, they have great colors. 
that you really want to show off. So that's when I threw in the yellow for bright, brightening everything that was going on up there. So knowing that and how you're going to approach it is, is very key to how you make things um, stick out, how you make your subjects stick out from a background. Um, but with the leaf, um, we just stick with the, the darker, the darker greens and, and just a little bit of white. But I'm actually going to use the yellow and blue this time to make my green for my leaf instead of using any of this green that's in the middle there. So I turned it this way so I don't get confused. <laughs> But let me also use another kind of plate. I'll put this one inside out. That way everyone can see what I'm mixing. So I'm gonna take some blue on my, my other plate here. Put it right there. And take a little bit of yellow. And this makes more blue than yellow makes actually a teal. If I were to put more yellow and make it more of a dark green, which is going to be hard to see because I didn't have enough on there, but let me mix that as well over here. So the blue and the yellow, they just make a green. And if you add just a tiny pinch of blue, it'll take it down to a darker green. But if you add a lot of blue, it's going to take it down here to the teal. So though you're mix mixing and your mixtures and how much to add, how little to add, add sparingly uh, to go in levels as opposed to, um, you know, super extreme color changes <laughs> and then you know later on we're actually going to take a lot of yellow to keep this a bright green more than that even ton of yellow to brighten it up for for the frog colors and even a little bit of white is going to go in here But if you're ever having issues mixing, just take a little bit over to the side and add a lot more whatever it is you need. So over here I just need it brighter. It's going to start to brighten even more. Over here I'll show the lightened version. So adding white lightens it. So we got bright and we got light. Let's see, we're still kind of drying up here. So let me, let me start waving it and try a little bit. It's not a speed dry, but it's something. Oh God. I feel, I feel alright to start throwing this leaf on here. So I'm going to start on the bottom with just a line. It's going to kind of come to the center of the canvas, just dragging it all the way to the top and off. It's actually going to end not too far in, but a little ways in. As it comes down, it's going to drop off and meet that line that we made. And from there, you really just want to fill it in. Yeah, 
This is almost like putting down a base. And it's going to have to dry as well. We're going to keep it in some areas pretty dark. All right. I'm going to rinse that out, let that dry a little bit. Not much dry brushing technique just yet, but it'll happen with the frog. I'm gonna let that sit for a little bit here. Definitely experiment with your greens. Um, you know, add add variations and see see what you come up with. Um, you could even stick with teals if you like the teals. Um, I'm a fan of teal myself. It shows up in a quite quite a few different areas on this painting and the leaf, you know, in some aspects. And then even on the frog, kind of on the stomach area, uh, the teal. I was doing a dark blue there, but then I saw teal actually made it um, stand out a little bit nicer. And if you actually look at the frog, um, I had a hard time telling whether it was dark blue or or a teal because there seemed to be either a glow from the green or maybe it was teal um, either way it was a very nice uh, touch to to the frog and to the painting so stuck with the teal and um, sometimes I exaggerate as well what's going on with the subject uh, just to make it stick out a little bit more so um, if you're ever looking at a subject and you know you're you're gonna paint it and you want to portray certain aspects a little bit more exaggerated you can definitely do that and uh you know that's that's kind of that's a part of art that's a part of being an artist and and kind of exploring the creativity so feel free to always you know i definitely exaggerated his feet a lot a lot more than was in the photo um, his arm, uh, his eyes, I, I added a little bit more to the eye, so, you know, feel free to take a look at these things and get creative and, you know, add, add what you, what you think could be there. So another way that you can mix some of these colors too is you can add a pinch of black if you if you really want it. Um, I wouldn't go super far with the black. I really honestly add a pinch because it takes it down a lot. It also dulls it out. But this can also be this can be very valuable um, to paintings. I talk about it a lot where I don't really like to use black a lot, but it still adds value nonetheless if you just go a little bit at a time. There are spots that call for, you know, real dark, but just kind of living in the life of, you know, black and white, it's, there's always going to be gray area. So, 
Um, you always want to take note of the values that are there besides just dark and light. You want to look at all the medium in-betweens and the middle grounds and you want to see what's what's available there as well. That is what also helps painting stick out a lot. So when I do anything with black, very little bit at a time, um, especially if I'm, if this is really wet and I'm adding it, um, taking note on how much paint is there to add to and what it's going to do, um, is real important because, um, it, I lost my train of thought, but, um, it's, it's very important to know, you know, when you're adding to your canvas what's gonna what's gonna occur kind of have a good idea of what's gonna occur I would say so if I were to add a little black right now it'd be down in this area just to give an example and even though I added a little more than I had to my palette this paint is still wet so there's a lot more green along here than there is you know than there was on this on this palette so there's always it's always something to take note of between your canvas and your palette and what's what's going to be happening so try to um try to think about that i would say you know don't don't over burden yourself with it however try to have a good idea how much you're adding um yellow and black also happens to make a version of green and you know a lot more yellow obviously than than you would have of the black but you can also you can also work with that kind of color so definitely you know play with your mixture see see what you can come up with less is more always you can see I created with blue and yellow this many variations of green and white was up in this one but um, in black Know, down here so you know you don't need a bottle of green to make variations of green it does help in the long run you know to have green but if you're limited um, especially in a time like now with supplies and, and whatnot it's very possible to still achieve the colors that you're trying to achieve so we're gonna go ahead and start um, Kind of shaping this leaf out so i'm gonna take white to start with like i said i like to stay lighter not brighter with the yellow so lighter up here just going along this very top line just taking it a little bit lighter Stay darker down here and I'm actually gonna start to go along a line here this is gonna be kind of the middle could be a little bit higher we don't necessarily see the middle that well take a little bit of black I'm gonna start to kind of swoop this in a direction so everything's gonna come down and to the to the right here and if you come outside the leaf a little bit that's actually okay there are layers to this leaf that happen let me make some more of this here to make it work everything doesn't have to fit in a box here you can actually just kind of differentiate down here a little bit Staying mainly in some dark colors right now. I see the glare's not happening on the camera, so I'm good with that. It's getting real glary for me with, with my window, but it's looking the way that it needs to. Alright, and from there, um, I just continue to build upon this leaf. 
you can switch it up between lights and darks. I'm gonna go light since I already went dark and just start kind of picking some areas even if you just add white to your brush just to lighten it up in some areas doesn't need a whole lot of time on this leaf but um, it's nice to still add details where where it's needed right down here as it gets lower on the leaf it can get darker is your leaf make it how you like it um i like variations of greens so i guess i like teals i like when it goes lighter um i like really soft greens the nice neons and the nice um well, i guess neons more bright but uh, real light greens. But keeping in mind the whole time that we don't want to, we don't want to overshadow the frog with with any of these greens so i might take this back down just a little bit yeah about there you could even add um a little bit of dark green back up in there if you wanted not quite super dark, just, just a little bit darker. This is the leaf for the frog before we do the foundation of the frog. And once again, I mean, you can Blue, yellow, white, black. You can make so many different greens just with those primary colors. Um, you don't need don't need a bottle of green, but it's, it's you know it's still good to have a bottle of green if you can. But just just goes to show if you don't, there's ways to make it happen. So we're gonna go back over here to this this palette with my red, blue green, yellow, black, white. Um, now I'm going to dip into the white here. I have a little bit of green kind of mixing in, but I'm okay with that. We're going to start putting the base coat of this frog down. Basically, I start probably about the center of the leaf down here for the body. It's going to come up it's gonna come around this way and then there's gonna be an eye right around here so this might even come up a little higher it's gonna come out a little bit and then the other eye is gonna be over here just kind of sketching with the paintbrush you can use a smaller brush you can use a pencil, um, whatever works for you. It's gonna come down here. From there, it's just gonna come right back. Maybe down a little bit as you're coming down. It comes at kind of a slant. Comes inward, and then it's got the stomach. Or the chest, 
chest, chest to stomach is about here. We've got an arm that comes around, so. Right, if you just want to think in lines, think a line there. And then it kind of bends around over here. The leg is going to do something similar here, come down, it's going to come inward, and their legs are a little, little awkward, a little funny, um, they bend in a very odd, peculiar way, along with their, um, their feet, I would say. Um, they kind of, they're, they're real curvy, they're real, um, flexible, kind of move how, however they, however you position them, they, what they do. So we're going to fill all this in with this coat here. I took all these different directions with the paint, it's very important, it lets me know where certain things are the difference between the arm here and the body that that is going to show In here is going to be where the arm starts. It's going to trail up here. It's actually going to reach over here. And I'm just going to continue it. As long as I can see these lines, it's good. Put that in there. Adding white, just lightening it up. Add a little bit more up here. All right. This is a base coat for a good portion of the body. And right now, I'm going to let most of this dry before I put down the coat for for the feet. But that gives me time to kind of work on everything up here. If you want to do a second coat. You definitely can. Um, I only did one on the original there, just because there is a lot of white that shows uh, shows up again throughout the the layers of their frogs. So I don't really worry too much about doing a second coat, but you definitely can if you, if you'd like to. But here's where I'm going to use a lot more of the yellow with green. I'm not going to use that plate. Maybe instead I will use this plate here. But blue and yellow again to make these mixtures. A lot more yellow this time. And even white will go in here. So it's a brighter, lighter frog. And we do this in, in a lot of layers. So very top. We'll just start putting down these colors. It's a real thin line with the eyes, so I'm not going to go over the eyes just yet. Pretty much the top of the snout. This goes around the arm, and it follows back down here. We'll just cover that real fast. Again, if you want to go down to a smaller brush, you can. And go on the arm. And on the leg.
this arm to and just keep those different directions. I did a circle there. He's starting to form. We're actually going to come back to the brown mixture that we did um, earlier. So red and green again. This time I'm actually going to take a green that I mixed. So red in one of these greens. That way I can be consistent with what I was saying. Comes to a brown. I'm just going to use a little bit of this brown here. I'm going to carry it over this part of the frog. You can add a little bit of white to that if you like. You can add a little pinch of red even. It's gonna take a few times to get the color that we're going for and to cover up Any spots we see in the back. And if you need, you can always put back um, that leaf if you lose it. So I'm going to come, especially with a darker color in this area, frog is definitely covering it up. So darker there, put that leaf back. I'm going to switch over to a smaller brush, probably about this size here. Mm. And I'm going to come back in with these lighter, brighter greens to put the rest of this eye in. It's a real, real thin line up here. And if you'd like, you can go ahead and fill this in in the eye with red. It's going to be a few layers we got to do to that. That's also going to help you thin out that line all the way around. If you want to do the other side, it does come out a little bit over there. So, it's coming out from that green. It's kind of like a quarter of a circle. Oops. And I realized this time I made the frog a little bit bigger. I think that's a habit of mine. Anytime I do a second painting, it's not going to be exactly like the first, but it's going to be the same principles that I'm using. <laughs> Alright, so we've got our base coats down, we've got a frog kind of showing up, we've got the leaf happening in there. Um, if you want to, you can take a small brush, and you can come in with some more details in this leaf. So. I want to maybe lighten up something in here. Now is a good time because it's not quite as wet. I'm just gonna put these details in here a little bit nicer. But I want to blend that still. I really, I don't want this to take over the frog. I just kind of want it to be a little bit lighter here and there. Uh, 
to set those back where they belong. Some of the black. Yeah. And you notice I'm not, I'm not going super dark. Like I'm not using straight black just yet on the leaf. That'll be later with um, the shadows from his hands being placed on the leaf. If you want to do, well, let's see. Let's see if we can do this base coat for, for some of the feet. I'm going to put this back one in first because I feel like I'm going to cover it this time with this arm. But it basically comes out over here. A little further out than the leg to show the, the distance and the depth. Right there. That one will be there. The third one will be the longest and largest. It'll be kind of off canvas just a little bit. Now let's come up here to the top foot. And I'm gonna start with that top um, individual toe. Definitely put some curvature it adds, you know, kind of the aspect of the weight that it's putting on, on the leaf. Weight is important for setting a subject on something. You definitely want to show that there's a resistance happening. There, the base. So we're starting to put down the feet here. And then this one. I'm going to start with that back kind of thumb, toe. <laughs> really not sure what, what is considered. Same thing there. Kind of branch it off like a Y. actually going to see a little bit more of this one this time. I'm going to add this little detail right up here by the eye. Not sure if that's an ear or something where it helps them to hear. We're gonna throw that right there for now. And now it's time for the drying game. Once this is dry, that's when you start to build up all the details. And it makes it a lot easier to, to form those details. Um, almost like hitting the gas pedal and going to 10, 10 miles an hour instead of just flooring it and hitting 60. <laughs>
if you are planning on painting this and you haven't yet, um, because you're not following along and you're just kind of watching, um, definitely visit the Minecraft video for, um, my drawing tutorial. Very good coverage of, um, kind of how to start getting into drawing, thinking about shapes, thinking about, um, you know, lines and direction and, and things like that. Um, that'll help you to understand kind of how to go about forming, uh, the design of the frog when you're, when you're coming on, on here to, um, actually paint it yourself. You can always tweak with acrylic painting, um, like right now, but I kind of want to bring this out a little bit further. But, you know, to have those kind of foundational values will get you going in the right direction to having a figure, you know, to build up from when you're putting down your base coats and everything. But I would definitely recommend that one. And then, um, you know, trying out some of my other videos, the bat for sure. Uh, so a lot of forgiveness with the bat painting on how to kind of sculpt and mold your figure to where you want it. Um, and then definitely the tiger. Um, did a lot of that with the tiger for sure. So visit some of those other, other videos. I have a lot of different information that I, I tried to put in there. Um, but the Minecraft for drawing for sure. Um, definitely gets you on the shapes and kind of 3D and thinking about um, just about uh, everything nearly. <laughs> All the basics. Let me see if there's any place on here I can start working. I might revisit here now around this area here. Adding in some white. Lighten it up again. I'm gonna carry this down. So this carry down a little bit. But you can even, you know, come back to your mixture of brown. Use white for the light. Use the brown for the dark. So red. Yellow and blue to make the green. So red and green. you want to try your hand add a little bit of red and black it's another way to bring it bring it down and I definitely want to do that around this area here so I can see where it's about to get real dark and there's gonna be a separation between kind of the if they have a neck the neck area to the body It's gonna get darker there to cause that separation. Definitely down here. And I would say even along kind of the mouth area. Which actually extends nearly to the arm. So it goes up here. in the white paint. Their eyes are a little, they're pretty large, so, you know, doing this on a larger scale, we're gonna have to make this eye a little bit larger. And that's okay, because we can always come back with wherever we need to put the green. It's actually gonna be Probably this large here. Yep. And 
don't be alarmed by that. We're going to do a lot of things to that area once it's dry. So let's continue kind of this shading area. Definitely down here along even the leaf a little bit. It's going to get darker in there. I'm going to come back in between like the middle of where it's getting dark here and just kind of apply some white. Bring that upwards. I'm going to adjust here as well a little bit. Bringing the stomach in more. So the green really kind of starts right at the arm. So it's about right here. And again, if you lose your leaf, you can put that right back in. pretty dark in that area because he's covering it. And if you like, like we did with the eye, um, we can start to, I'm going to use yellow to start base coating his feet. It's not going to stand out much right now, but it will later on. It's a good time to do this. I'm using yellow because it's um, the feet are going to be kind of the brightest aspect of the frog besides the green. So I really wanted to stand out. When the time comes. Again, I'm going to make sure certain things are ahead of others. That being, this arm right here is going to be above this toe. I'm going to let this dry a little bit, but I'm going to show now. Um, a little trick with some blue. There's a couple ways that you can approach your blue. Uh, if you like the neon blue or if you like just a light blue. It's kind of the same with the green. So it starts out mixing a teal. So blue and yellow. More blue than yellow. To get that teal color. We're going to add a lot of white. So, scrape that white up. This is going to be like an aqua blue. Right now it's a minty kind of greenish bluish. Let's add more blue to that and then more white.
this here is a form of blue that you could use if you like this kind of blue for the blue areas on the frog. What I did was I added white and a little pinch of blue. And I stuck with colors like this here. Even blue itself, I added But whichever one you prefer is the one that I would suggest to use on your frog. Um, everyone likes different shades of blue, so there's a you know there's quite a few ways to mix those. The, the idea, honestly, is just just like with the green, yellow, you know, brightens and light whitens or white lightens. <laughs> And you can do that with yellow and blue, you can do that with yellow and green, you can do that with white and blue, you can do that with white and green. So, it's just kind of adding those, those methods to these different colors. But I'm going to stick over with the blue that I have over here, and these kind of blues. Which is more on the white than it is on the yellow. Um, just because that, that sticks out to me more with the frog. So we can start kind of laying that down as well. It's going to be the top part of the shoulder here. Even if you just want to highlight it in blue first. And then add white. That's fine. And the underarm is white, or you know, it's it's a lot lighter. It's a lot light, light, a lot lighter like the stomach. Same, same color. We are going to cover the top of the arm with a lighter green again. Some more white on here. So if you take your time and just add these details as you go along let areas dry, add more um, the more the more time you take, the more the frog is going to stick out it's going to stand out 
Um, the trick, honestly, is practicing and letting your paint dry. <laughs> a slight circle around ring around this eye again Okay. And real fast, I'm gonna coat kind of the feet again. So yellow and red this time. A lot of yellow, a little bit of red to make slight orange and just go over top of this. Maybe even a little bit of white. Let the other foot dry still. If you made it this far, awesome. If you're painting along with this, I hope that um, you're finding all the success for as far as we've gotten so far. a lot of kind of patience waiting for a paint to dry. Let's visit kind of the inner area right in here real fast. So I'm going to take and make a green. Just a regular green for now. Maybe on the brighter side, but yellow and blue, just to put that center in there. <laughs> and we can shape that ring with the center, bring it smaller. And on both sides of this ring, we're going to add shades of darkness. So I'm going to exaggerate a little bit with black in my green. On this side over here, we're just going to make a C on the inside here. Inside of the ring. And I'm going to dry the brush off and I'm just going to drag the outskirts of that into into the ear that starts to bring that side showing um the rays very well so on the other side i'm not going to go that dark but i'm going to use a darker green to show the same thing happening over there so 
a little bit of a darker green over here. But I'm not using any black in this green. Same thing on... You can use a little black on this side if you like, but right now, I'm just going to use a darker green. You can start to see that ring really forming. That's the simple step to um, achieving this. And on the inside of that, we're going to keep this light green happening. Light green ring. And the dark green is going to come underneath of that too. So, a little bit of dark green down here. Definitely over on this side. You can even add a little black, like I said earlier, to, to that green. Very little. Very, very, very little. To make that protrude as it should. It's basically the same idea with the eye. I'm going to coat this in green. That's still a little wet, so I'm going to let that, that sit for a bit. But I'm going to take regular green. I'm going to come around where the eye, where the eyelid kind of stops. Right on that edge. Bring it darker. You can bring that all the way around if you, if you want. So follow that down here. Up through here. And that starts to bring it out. What I did from there was I took my super thin liner brush, dip it in, in the water and, and dry it, and uh, add a little bit of black. And on the very edge of the red is where I put some black lines. To show the separation is happening. Don't have to go all the way around. But you definitely want to follow it back up over on this side. And real fast, we're going to actually put a little diamond shape right in the center here. pupil come back in here with the light green and on the outskirts of even that you can do some darker versions of green if you wanted Or if you did like me and add a little too much, just come back in with your light green. Put it right back in there. Right in the center. So the same can be said on the other side with the other eye. Um, obviously we don't see the full eye, but if you follow the curve of the nose up here, it separates separates everything that needs to be separated there. So, 
I'll blend that out. Still want to keep it fairly dark over there. So a little bit of darker green. And definitely a little bit of lighter green. If you find yourself having a hard time going darker, take the other side and go lighter. And that actually brings us to kind of the nostril, where we're going to have definitely a, a, a darker kind of green in here, but we're going to start with that part. So there's a little bit of a dark kind of dot there. We're going to put a white ring around the left side of that. And light green. Just like before, you can add a darker green on the other side if you like. Go at your own pace, use the size brush that you are comfortable with. can even go, you know, along the shoulder or the darker area of the arm, underarm. There. And bring that blue here. Make sure that you, you know, even out a lot of these areas too. I don't really want this to be super separated. I just want it to be noticeably. And add some greens along here. Switch up your greens. Not only for showing the different <laughs> shades on the frog, but also to keep the piece really interesting to look at. I'm going to let all that kind of dry for a little bit. We're going to visit the shadow again. So, you know, I'm, I'm ready. I'm pretty certain that I have everything where I want it. 
I'm gonna kind of put a shadow around this frog against the background. I'm just gonna dry brush that in there, just like in the beginning. Have them stick out really well. So the darkest area is going to stay up against the line of the frog, and everything outside of it is going to get dispersed. It's kind of glaring at me, so I'm going to do my best here to show that. So I don't touch up against the frog, I just disperse what's all outside of that. You want to go down here, very tip of the brush, stay consistent with your, your piece. That's going to bring them out a lot. Another variation, I mean, you can even add just yellow to the green, blend it in there, brighten it up if you really want it to be super bright. These are just like some examples as we're going through this of how, how you might want your frog to be portrayed. Just make sure you add that to all of your green areas. <laughs> now down here, in the leg, it's gonna be real dark. It's being hidden back here. well and definitely a little bit right here I'm gonna come back up here a little bit and add some green some of this light green and go back in with this dark color just to shape it up again dry it off on the towel Use what's there. I'm going to 
add a little bit of white up in that region. So the eye is finally dry. I want to add kind of that last layer to it. I'm going to add yellow and red to make a nice orange. A lot more yellow than the red. real bright. Even if you just add yellow itself, that's fine. So I'm going to add back the people a little bit more. I'm going to take my fancy liner brush, dip into the white, and start adding these details. So there's a dot up here, I'm going to put a line, and really I just kind of zigzag some lines coming out from the pupil. Just make it look real shiny. shading to the other eye. All that I would do, really wouldn't do much detail work on the other eye. Just a little bit of adding the shade to it. Yellow on the red. Let's hit this side of the body with that teal color. A lot more blue than yellow to make a teal. It's gonna come underneath the armpit there. So three stripes, and in between that, those stripes, and put yellow. even add a little bit more blue to the teal if you like. We're going to add his arm colors. It's a nice blue stripe coming down here. Even on the leg. on this arm with some shine marks now for the purple I actually mixed red and white to make a pink and then I'm, I'm doing a little bit of blue to make this purple it's almost like a lavender color I'm gonna add that to the arm down here. Definitely to the leg down here. Now that it's dry, I'm going to add this light green again so that it'll match the rest of the body. I'm going to kind of shape up this area right here. 
That makes a little more sense. If you need to go to the smaller brush, always feel free to do so. I'm just going to add this dark line around here. I'm going to add a little bit here to the nose area. So that it could be seen more so. If you see areas you want to hit again, always feel free to do, do that. Unless you feel you're at the point of no return, then don't. Don't force yourself to make an adjustment if you don't feel you need to. So continue to let things dry, come back over them later when they are dry. It's really the only difference other than size between this frog and the original the example. Um, you know, areas were drying and then I came back and I hit them again. Um, so it depends on the outcome that you want. I mean, if you continue and continue and continue, and you don't give it really that time to fully dry, um, you're going to end up with colors that kind of do this, as opposed to if you do let it uh, fully dry, you know, you're going to be able to work it to get very specific colors all around. Uh, no, shades happening, things going the way that they should. pretty quickly. Alright, so let's hit these feet again. Yellow and red to make a nice orange. to mix nope that'll work all right yellow and red to make this orange feel free if you want to throw a little bit of white in there as well
what I would do is I, I would allow those areas to dry, like I was saying earlier, dry all the way, um, and I would build up from there. So I would take and shade with red off to the sides where the webs of the feet are and everything like that. Here on the bottom, I do shading with red and a little bit of black here and there. Really, the black and the red made a dark red, which is what I was going for. And I built it up from red to orange to a very light orangish yellowish gold. hard to make it happen right now because it's so wet <laughs> but on the very top I just would the very last thing I did was I add yellow by itself to the red and the orange and everything that happened last thing that I'm going to show here is shading around um, the leaf here. So first I'm going to go around right here where the stomach, where everything's kind of protruding over top of the leaf. Don't want to use a whole lot of black like I just did. You want to use a little bit. <laughs> But like we did lining around the frog here, we're going to line around all the toes, brush that out. Mainly on this side of, of everything. Not really gonna go in there too much. Just to thin this out is all. Down here on this side. Same thing with this. And that's the shadow for your frog. I'm going to hit one more area up here. The back of the frog. To show. Where is the trolley? That is the idea for our little tree frog. Uh, make sure you sign 
your initials on the bottom right corner. Um, if you're doing your edges, make sure you do your edges to the bottom edge very last so it doesn't stick to whatever you're painting on. Um, and then you'll have your nice tree frog to hang on your wall. Um, give me some ideas for uh, the next videos after the tiger crown. Um, I think I have another lined up, but if anybody has any other ideas, definitely let me know. Um, I want to I wanna get what whatever it is anybody else wants to do out there. Um, don't leave me hanging. <laughs> I want to give you the content that you're looking for. So let me know for sure, and I'll get it up there. And I will see you very soon. Thank you.